Well, hello everybody, welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. My name is Paul DC, your instructor, and this is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Well, I know what you're thinking, what's with the white, I'm sorry, what's with the pink shirt? <laughs> what's with the pink shirt? I wore one a couple of weeks ago, and that's correct. A couple of weeks ago, I did a lesson on rhodochrosite, and I promised that I would get to uh, a kind of a cousin gemstone for it, but it took me a little while to get here because, as I mentioned before, we're so, sort of getting uh, rid of one house, we're building another house, and we're pulled in different directions. I've got uh, some business opportunities that I'm going to be able to share with you in about a month. Um, so I'm going to try and stay ahead of these lessons and shoot them in advance because when we're traveling, it's very difficult for me to get these lessons out for you. So I'll try and keep it unobstructed. But as of tonight's taping, we're closing in on 2,200 subscribers, and I really appreciate each and every one of you and all of your support for this channel. I really do appreciate it. And if you have not yet subscribed, remember subscribing is free. It doesn't cost you a penny. It allows me to do these lessons for you for free. So two weeks ago, I did a lesson on, might even been three weeks ago by now, on rhodochrosite. That was episode 67. This week, we're going to talk about another pink gemstone called rhodonite. Now, there aren't a lot of pink gemstones out there. A few of them come to mind probably, like a pink garnet, you know, the rhodolite garnet. Um, the uh, pink sapphire is, is a beautiful gemstone. Uh, obviously, rose quartz can be a very pretty pink gemstone. You can even get a pink diamond, which would be obviously very, very expensive. And you can get a pink tourmaline, which also sometimes can be very high in price. But there aren't a lot of the opaque pink gemstones. And two of the most prominent ones that come to mind are rhodochrosite, the lesson we did a few weeks ago, and tonight's lesson, which is rhodonite. Okay, so what exactly is rhodonite? Rhodonite is a pink manganese silicate mineral, a variable composition that often contains significant amounts of iron, magnesium, manganese, uh, and calcium, and it's a silicate. So how is that different than what we see in the rhodochrosite? Well, the rhodochrosite, as you saw, and I'll show a picture again, you'll notice that it's a beautiful pink gemstone that has some white banding in it. When you take a look at the rhodochrosite, it's going to be a beautiful pink color. It tends a little darker in, to my eye, oftentimes with the uh, rhodonite. But that rhodonite has some black banding and sometimes even black spiderweb in it, which is also very, very beautiful. So how close are these two to each other when we talk about the chemical composition and all of those things? Well, let's go to the tail of the tape for a very short comparison of these two gems. So we'll start first with what is the chemical composition of that rhodonite. As I told you earlier, it's a manganese silicate. Now, when we were talking about the rhodochrosite a couple of weeks ago, it is a manganese carbonate. So that's very, very similar in their chemical composition. Well, how about that crystal structure? Well, the crystal structure for our rhodonite is called triclinic versus when we take a look at the uh, rhodochrosite, the crystal structure is trigonal. So I know what you're thinking. What's the difference between triclinic and trigonal? Well, remember tri, like triangle, is three sides. When you're talking about triclinic, it has three sides, but they're unequal sides, as opposed to the trigonal, which is the case of the rhodochrosite, it's symmetrical. So three equal sides of that triangle crystal structure. But still, again, a very big similarity. I could definitely call these guys kissing cousins. Now we get into the most scale of hardness for those of you that remember it is which gem can scratch another gem. It goes from one to 10, developed by Fred, Frederick Mose. 
if you take a look at the hardness in our rhodonite, which is our lesson for today, five and a half to six and a half on your most scale of hardness. Now going back to our rhodochrosite, a little bit softer. That one's going to be between um, three and a half to four. So yeah, actually your rhodonite could scratch your rhodochrosite. Not that I recommend you doing that. All right, then we get into the toughness. Now remember, toughness is not about the scratch test. The toughness is about the tenacity. How, how does it take uh, to, you know, chipping and cracking all together? Uh, well, if we take a look at our rhodonite, it is rated good on that tenacity or toughness scale, as opposed to the rhodochrosite, that's going to be fair to poor. So it's not going to be as durable as your rhodonite is. And then the refractive index. Now remember the refractive index. That's dealing with what is the sparkle of the gemstone. When we think of a sparkle, we think of a diamond. Um, when we think of opaques, we don't really think of them as sparkle, but again, they will have a refractive index and you can measure that. And in the case of our rhodonite, it is 1.71 to 1.73. And our rhodochrosite from the previous lesson, it is 1.6 to 1.8. So literally, that's a tie. They're very, very similar in their sparkle or their refractive index. Specific gravity. Remember that one? That's the heft of the gemstone. How does it feel in relation to the weight of it? Well, these are going to be pretty similar as well. So when we talk about the rhodonite, 3.57 to 3.76. And when we talk to the rhodochrosite, it is 3.6 to 3.7. That's kind of a wash on that one as well. Okay, so which one is, is prettier? Um, well, I can't tell you that. That's up to you. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I like them both for similar reasons. Uh, I love the pink color. I also love the fact that you have that white, beautiful... I love when somebody... One of the comments on my after that, that lesson said... Rhodochrosite reminds me of bacon with a little white, you know, fat from the bacon and then the pink color. Whereas the rhodonite is, has more of that black banding in there. And I find that very, very interesting in a gemstone. But again, that is up to you. You determine what you like better. Is one more expensive than the other? Not really. I, I would say probably, generally speaking, there's probably more of a demand for the rhodochrosite, but in the rhodonite, um, it's, it's actually a little bit more rare. But both of them you can probably pick up in a rock shop for you know, a couple of bucks for a specimen, like a tumbled specimen. So it's something that I would recommend that you add to your collection. Um, rhodonite is an uncommon mineral. It is found in a few small deposits around the world. Sources of rhodonite include Argentina, which is similar. We saw the rhodochrosite comes from there as well. Australia, Brazil, some very fine specimens come out of Brazil in the Minas Gerais mines, a little north of the Amethyst mines where I visited. Um, where else? Canada, uh, and the United Kingdom, specifically in England, India, Peru, which is a place you can find another pink gemstone called uh, opal, pink opal, and Russia, and it's even been found in Sweden. Now, as far as the United States is concerned, there are a couple of states where rhodonite can be found. One of them would be in North Carolina, Colorado. Now, where do we hear Colorado before when we were talking about the rhodochrosite and the sweet home rhodochrosite mine in Colorado? Uh, New Jersey. And it is actually the state gem, rhodonite I'm talking about now, for Massachusetts. Why it's their state gem? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so where did the name rhodonite come from? Well, much like rhodochrosite, and rhodolite, that rhodo, that rhodon, is a Greek word that means rose, like the, the color of a rose. So much like that, that's where the name comes from. 
Also, much like the rhodochrosite, it's usually found in an opaque form. And, but like the rhodochrosite, I told you about the exception, some of that really highly collectible rhodochrosite, which in that sweet home rhodochrosite mine in Colorado, can be re it's in a, like a pure crystal, gem quality crystal, and it can be very, very expensive and it's really a darling for the collectors. The same holds true for the rhodonite. Very rarely you will see a beautiful, almost completely transparent crystal in the rhodonite and it's going to fetch a huge price. It's going to be certainly reserved for those really big time gem collectors. But as I mentioned before earlier, if you just like the color of the pink and you like maybe that black banding in there, you could go to a rock shop and probably get a tumbled stone for a couple of bucks and put it on your shelf and really enjoy the heck out of it. Anyway, um, that's going to do it for this uh, week's lesson, which is, of course, episode, what did I say this one was? 69, I think. Episode 69, which is the road tonight. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't yet done so, please hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate that. It doesn't cost you a penny and it allows me to do these lessons for you for free. I'm going to try and keep you apprised if there's days that I can't do a lesson. I'm going to try and get them in the, uh, in the pipeline for you. But in any case, I'll see you next week on the Colored Gemstone Academy. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye, everybody.